To thee we come, O Lord, our God. participate in this holy sacrifice. <clears throat> and now let us recite together the second confidior. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Enter. Let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty Father, be mindful of those you have called to service in your church. 
Pour forth your Holy Spirit upon them, so that they may be strengthened to proclaim the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal Father. We, your children, come to you this day, asking for your peace and blessing to rest upon all those who are involved in the scouting programs. Dear Lord, enkindle in their hearts a true reverence for you, so that they may always be prepared to proclaim your holy word. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this, the fifth Sunday in the ordinary time, the first reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne with the train of his garment filling the temple. Seraphim were stationed above. They cried one to the other, holy, Holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. All the earth is filled with his glory. At the sound of that cry, the frame of the door shook, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe to me, I am doomed, for I am a man of unclean lips, living among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, holding an ember that he had taken with tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, See, now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, your sin purged. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Here I am, I said, send me. The word of the Lord. The response for today is in the sight of the angels, I will sing your praises, Lord. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Because of your kindness and your truth, for you have made great, above all things, your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. And they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. The second reading for today is taken from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I hand it on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one abnormally born, he appeared to me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach, and so you believe the word of the Lord. Amen. 
For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. Your Savior, I have called you by name. You are mine. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Therefore will I proclaim you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praise to your name. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of, of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While the crowd was pressing in on Jesus and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret. He saw two boats there alongside the lake. The fishermen had disembarked and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, he asked him to put out a short distance from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. After he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and lower your nets for a catch. Simon said in reply, Master, we have worked hard all night and have caught nothing but at your command, I will lower the nets. When they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their nets were tearing. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both boats so that the boats were in danger of sinking. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at his knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, Lord. For I am a sinful man. For astonishment at the catch of fish they had made seized him and all those with him, and likewise James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners of Simon. Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. When they brought their boats to the shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the gospel of the Lord. now and forevermore. Amen. Adventure of Philonius is Christus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. These words are taken from the first letter of Saint Peter the Apostle. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, you, have, you who have ears to hear. It has been said that without the resurrection of Jesus, the Western world as we know it would not exist. Think about it for a moment. Without the resurrection of Jesus, the Western world as we know it would not exist. There would be no Renaissance. There would be no Reformation. And we go on and on and on. 
When we trace the beginnings of Christianity, we understand that the followers of Jesus were Jewish. Jesus himself was a Jewish rabbi. The concept of a Messiah based on the Torah and the teachings of the prophets were strictly Jewish. It has also been said that without the resurrection of Jesus in 29 or 30 AD, there would not even be a Christian religion. The followers of Jesus would have remained members of a Jewish sect. But following the resurrection of Jesus and the Pentecost experience, the Christian faith grew exponentially. For three centuries, every attempt was made to erase this Jewish sect of the Nazarene through what is known in history as the Great Imperial Persecutions. The first persecution of Christians was organized by the Emperor Nero in 64 AD after the Great Fire of Rome, and it continued until the Edict of Milan in 313 AD by Emperor Constantine I, and it is where Christianity became the state religion of the Holy Roman Empire. So what caused this faith to continue amid the persecutions for close to 300 years? I believe it was first the power of God raising Jesus from the dead. This was the driving force that brought people into the faith, both Jews and Gentiles, and all those who actually witnessed the resurrected Lord. But the message of the resurrection of Jesus needed to be talked about, shared with others, and taught by the apostles and then the first bishops and doctors of the church. This power of this message would also be witnessed by many of the countless martyrs, men and women, who would die savagely rather than to denounce their faith in the power of the resurrected Lord. In St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 11, we read, If the Spirit of the One who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the One who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through His Spirit that dwells in you. The calling of Jesus by Jesus of disciples would begin a chain reaction in the spreading of the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus would give a great commission prior to his ascension as found in Matthew 28 verse 19 and 20 when he directed his disciples to go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. My brothers and sisters, we are all called upon to be disciples of the Lord. Some will be like Peter and the others who followed the Lord, and there will be some who will not. Even the Lord said that many are called but few are chosen. But the ones that are called should reflect on the calling in the words of Jesus as found in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 16, where he said, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. The theme in our Polish National Catholic Church in 2019 is discipleship. Without disciples, the message of the good news will not be brought to others. 
This message is not just found in large gatherings, but it is shared by all of us who have come to believe in Jesus, as Thomas did when Jesus said to him, Thomas, you have believed because you have seen, but blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. To be a disciple of the Lord is to know the Lord and his teachings. This is why it is so important to read and to reflect on the Word of God daily. As we celebrate Scout Sunday today in the Polish National Catholic Church, we are reminded of the Boy Scout motto, Be Prepared. If we are to be true disciples of the Lord, we need to be prepared in God's Word, which brings about in us a deeper faith and a deeper commitment to be like Jesus in all that we do in words and actions and all that we will share with others. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters, discipleship is a transformation that takes place in our minds and in our hearts. Throughout the New Testament, we hear phrases from Jesus such as being reborn, not putting a new patch on an old sack, or putting fresh wine in an old wineskin. St. Paul, as well as other writers in the New Testament, speak of phrases such as let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Or being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Or a new birth to a living faith. May we reflect today on the Lord calling us into discipleship. And may we turn to the Lord for wisdom and a greater understanding of this calling for us to live and to spread the saving graces of his divine word. Let the words of Jesus found in John be an inspiration to all of us this day as we continue to walk as his disciples. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, if you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I bow low toward your holy temple, 
I praise your name for your fidelity and love, for you have exalted over all of us your name and your promise. Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, may we place these gifts before you, and may you count upon us to be true disciples. Through Christ our Lord, amen. <laughs> Almighty and eternal Father, we ask for your peace and blessing to rest upon all those that are involved in the scouting program. Dear Lord, guide them on the paths of their lives. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Oh, forever and ever. of salvation, proclaiming the glory 
of God on the earth. Therefore, we join with the voices of angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift up our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of honor and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place, for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. And all here present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer, or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ. Also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, have suffered and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Christ, Jesus our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing to yourself so that it might be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love draw them to himself make them joyful and save them he instituted these holy mysteries and which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people at that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you his almighty Father giving thanks to you he blessed it broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat it for this is my body which is given for you In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again he gave thanks to you. Blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do these things, do them in remembrance of me.
Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presents a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of eternal salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which our high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive from the most sacred altar of your Son may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts are always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merit and eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching uh, and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. intercession of the blessed and glorious mother of God Mary together with your blessed apostles Peter and Paul's also Andrew and all the saints grant us peace in our day that being supported by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ your son and our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit Forever and ever, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of our world. 
my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. shall I return unto the Lord. For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
If you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The Lord be with you. Father, in this sacrament, we have shared the body and blood of Christ. Strengthen us that we may willingly follow Christ as his disciples and openly proclaim his truth through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal Father, <coughs> sanctify all those who are involved in the scouting movement dear lord may your peace and blessing rest upon the leaders and upon all who follow christ in their lives we ask this through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the holy spirit and our one god forever and ever the lord be with you Sacrifices are offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John, sent by God, who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made. Yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who were begotten, not by blood, nor by carnal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word became flesh and dwelt, made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. this day, I bring to mind that today, throughout the Polish National Catholic Church, is set aside for special prayers uh, for the scouting movement. And at the end of today's Mass, we will offer prayer that the scouting programs throughout our church may be blessed. Father Czarnecki, from Northampton is the national chaplain of the scouting. I am the secretary of the national scouting program. 
this last year we actually had a camporee on our grounds and this year we are looking of being able to repeat and to add it actually larger with a lot of different programs. I bring to mind that following this Mass Fellowship Hour downstairs, invitation to all of you to come and share. Also in the bulletin I had brought up um, for fuel assistance. Every single year it seems as though the price of oil, bless you, goes up and up. And so envelopes are in the back if you would consider making a slight donation uh, for the heating um, to defray the cost, greatly appreciated. This week, I will continue with pastoral visitations of homes in our parish. I bring to mind also, I had given updated information on the stained glass window. I think there were a couple of people who felt that we were going to approach all the parishioners and ask them to fit uh, uh, to take care of the bill of $19,000, but my brothers and sisters, um, I had given information that uh, what we're looking at right now is raising approximately $3,600, but there will be more information uh, that will be given later. Um, I know a week from tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, there is a, a committee meeting and also the information on the repair and restoration of our stained glass window uh, will be presented at our annual parish meeting that will be held on March the 10th, 2019 <coughs> for consideration and approval by all who will gather for the annual parish meeting. I'm happy to announce, Wayne, I want to thank you. Uh, Yesterday, we were able to take care of the, uh, the batteries or for the emergency lighting system. But uh, as things turned out, we realized that there was still one area and there has a need for a purchase of one more battery. Uh, so, so that will be taken care of this week. And then after that, to be able to approach the building inspector to come in and to give us a current updated uh, building certificate. Um, I know weeks have gone by, there have been questions that were asked, geez, Father, how much money did we actually clear on our fall this are? Well, I know uh, it's a little late in coming, but I talked with Buddy uh, last week, and uh, the figures that were given is that after all expenses, we were able to clear 6000 $476.84, which, as some people had said, is quite good for our fall bazaar. Next Sunday, we will begin with pre-Lent, Septuagesima Sunday, and that is basically, Septuagesima means 70 days before the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Is there anything else that I have failed to mention? If not, I have one more thing I'd like to extend birthday wishes to Janet. And uh, yeah, I know she's shaking her head, but we're not gonna let you go on that. So if we can, be before I conclude the announcements, can we all sing happy birthday to Janet? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Janet. couple of days and still on the trail. God bless. May we also remember in our prayers those who are sick, those who are in nursing homes, that the good Lord might bless those uh, dear people and also may the good Lord watch and bless all of us until we meet again.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be, for all Amen. And for all the faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. Amen. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.